bit about Brian, then I'll let him take it away. But he's a senior principal and co-founder of the landscape architecture firm MKSK. He's the first K in MKSK. If anybody knows who the other K is, maybe we'll give uh, gifts out at the end or something. Uh, MKSK is an award-winning landscape urban planning firm here in Columbus. They have additional offices in Covington, Lexington, West Lafayette, Greenville, South Carolina, I believe, and Detroit. Brian has extensive experience in all sorts of land development planning, waterfront development, park design, land use planning, campus plans, and urban design and mixed use redevelopment in the both private and public sector. Uh, he has many notable, notable projects. You might be familiar with some recent ones, the OSU NRDT, the North District Transformational Residential Area at Lane Avenue and the uh, Ohio State University, along with Messer, I think. I saw Brian here. Real collaborative effort, transformational housing project at Ohio State. Uh, under construction now, the Columbus Convention Center edition. And over the years, the Short North Streetscape redevelopment. In 2011, Brian was recognized for all of his fine work by receiving the Distinguished Alumni Award for Excellence in Engineering and Architecture at the High State University College of Engineering. And he's homegrown here. He's from Columbus, went to Bishop Watterson. He graduated from Ohio State and has been practicing uh, landscape architecture for, what, nearly 40 years. He started when he was 10, so it's okay. <laughs> Brian and his wife, Christy, live in Upper Arlington, and they have three children in their 20s. So please help me welcome Brian to Columbus Rotary, but also some applause to thank him for helping us turn around and face the river. Uh, it's great to see a lot of uh, familiar faces and friends and colleagues here. Uh, I want to start this all by saying before I show you all these pretty pictures of the riverfront and how it has transformed over the last 20 years to make you understand it is not my doing uh, and not my doing alone. I, my fingerprints are on portions of this redevelopment, um, but the planning and the development, uh, the construction, the financing uh, goes well beyond me. I was just saw Mr. Nitschke back there uh, a little bit ago. He did a plan in 1972. I was in high school in 1972. So there were others who were paying attention to what this riverfront could be back then. Uh, Mr. Weiler sitting here in front of us is one of the uh, key members of a fine development community in this city that has done tremendous things. So it isn't my efforts. It's, it's City of Columbus. George Arnold was my first client on a Columbus Riverfront project when he was the development director a couple of mayors ago, huh, Georgie? Um, <laughs> and uh, and the, the leadership that Columbus Downtown Development Corporation has taken and the Columbus Partnership and the great corporate citizenry we have here in American Electric Power and the Dispatch and Battelle and all the folks who have stepped up to help finance and, and push this forward. So. I'm happy and thrilled and honored to have had a role to play in it, and I'll try not to embarrass any of those folks I just named off as I represent their interests. Uh, the downtown riverfront, uh, what we think of the downtown reach, this confluence of, of uh, Sayuru and the Olentangy, this site not being unimportant, I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, many moons ago, back in the mid to early 90s, the entire riverfront was studied from the Ohio State University through, uh, through the downtown district to the Scioto Peninsula and beyond, and portions of the Scioto. And that was, uh, again, a couple of, couple of mayor, mayoral administrations ago. Uh, George Arnold and others will recall the uh, Columbus Riverfront Commons Corporation, which first uh, institutionalized a look at the Columbus Riverfront. Uh, but even further back to, to that, when my father was a child here, this is a view looking to the west from what was probably the Deschler Hotel, not quite sure, the Levesque Tower wasn't there yet, but this is shortly after the 1913 flood that did uh, wonders for urban renewal back uh, a few generations ago by taking out bridges and taking out a lot of, of uh, less than desirable housing and, and uh, development on the riverfront. But this really launched uh, the city of Columbus's serious look to the, uh, to the river and the development that happens adjacent to it. 
My involvement begun again back in the mid-1990s with Riverfront Commons Corporation looking at the river as a whole. And this is just a smattering of the successive development, design, construction projects that have happened to get us to where we are today, and we're not done. Getting close, but not quite done. Riverfront Commons, again, first said, let's take a look at this river. You can see this is a very wide river. This is how the river used to look before the Lowhead Dam was, review, was removed at the uh, Main Street Bridge. But it said, let's, let's turn our faces to the river, not, open, not, not treat it as an open sewer, but a place to recreate and to connect people. Pretty commonsensical stuff from an urban planning standpoint, but it's amazing how it took America a few generations to really understand what water courses can be in, in urban settings. Europeans figured it out years ago. This document was one I produced years ago that was really looking to the private development side of things following public investment in the riverfront and the infrastructure that that river represents. How could our developer community latch on to some of these what I call beachfront properties that are now adjacent to a, a newfangled river and do, uh, do their work in terms of generating quality of life and uh, uh, renewing some of those underutilized sites. My first involvement began with Genoa Park, which is the frontispiece to the COSI project. As COSI was under construction, the city of Columbus turned to the river and said, gee, this is probably not what we want to put in front of this magnificent new modernist piece of architecture, which is the COSI facility. So many of us will recall that floating band shell that a couple times got loose and actually floated. Um, so I was, I was happy to see it go all the way downstream, quite frankly. Uh, but we took the opportunity, again, with some great architects, not the least of which is Moody Nolan and engineers uh, in Burgess and Naipaul, to extend the front of that park out into the river, lessen the slope, create accessible routes for vehicles and for people, and to make a real place for a stage to be brought in and instead of floating downstream in floodwaters, to be able to be pulled back out before the flood gets there. So seemed pretty commonsensical to me. But this has been uh, a part of finishing off the, the park within which COSI sits. And, and you'll see in future slides that the west side of COSI is uh, underway as we speak. It has become a great place for our festivals and summertime activities. There are absolutely magnificent views of downtown Columbus from that vantage point. If you th we're, we're used to looking across the river from east to west. Sit on the west side and look east, and we have a very impressive, magnificent skyline. The Arena District Master Plan followed on shortly after that. As you know, the city of Columbus has been a key partner with nationwide realty investment and, and uh, dispatch printing and other private investors, AEP. Uh, to master plan and develop that key piece of property. Gee, many of us remember that. It was never an occupant, but I certainly remember <laughs> driving, driving past it. Parking lots and uh, old, old buildings. This is the master plan and plan view. The key and first part of the, of the master plan development was the construction of McPherson Commons, and that was to physically link the heart of the arena district to the riverfront. And once that piece of ground was developed, all of these surrounding properties came online rather quickly. We all know the success the arena district has been, private development and, and public investment. Uh, it is not just locally known or regionally known. The arena district is nationally known. I have the great good fortune of traveling about the country doing this type of work, and Columbus is on everybody's lips. North Bank Park, again with contribution from AEP and others. Again, some of us remember this view of the riverfront, not terribly attractive. That's what it looks like following development. Connection of bike trails, hither and yon, all the way up the Olentangy Corridor, up Scioto, incrementally that bike path is, that trail system is constantly being addressed. So any one of us living in parks, parts north or northwest can now get on our bicycles and, or rollerblades if I could even do that, certainly on a bicycle, and find our way all the way downtown, all the way south of downtown. So it's a magnificent trail and greenway system. A great place for special events. There's no shortage of places now on our riverfront for entertainment venues with all the magnificent festivals that we have. 
This uh, event pavilion uh, designed by George Acock um, at the end of Neal Avenue at <coughs> Spring Long has been a tremendous asset to the city. This is a four lease events pavilion. I've been to a few receptions there. It is a magnificent facility. Garage doors that open up out to a plaza that overlooks the river with long views to the riverfront. It is a financial and a cultural success. We have, we have discovered that you can put a boat on the Olentangy and the Scioto River. It's amazing. Um, and there is quite a lot of activity on that river. Again, as, a, as I stated before, we consider these riverfront developments as being beachfront. We don't have the mountains of Denver and we don't have the beaches of, of Miami, though some of those are going underwater, I come to understand. But this is an opportunity for us to develop green space and public amenity that is an incentive uh, and a quality of life addition to private development. The Audubon Center, again, many of us will remember this, the old Lazarus Warehouse. I think I bought a refrigerator there back in the, back in the day. And the impound lot, I won't tell you about my stories of the impound lot, <laughs> but I know it on a number of fronts. But, uh, and my first job uh, was with the City of Columbus in 420 West Whittier as part of Recreation and Parks. And this is after restoration, all of that Construction was removed. This was a brownfield site, some uh, fairly serious environmental considerations, but there's stormwater management devices, there's sequestered ponds, which have got some groundwater issues to them, uh, complete trail system, uh, play area, and then the Audubon Center, which has been a magnificent addition to this community. That's what it looks like in its finished condition. We thought it would be great to keep the water tower that was part of the old Lazarus warehouse and turn it into a feature. It has an observation deck on it. I was always hoping that someday we'd put a zip line on that. Uh, you won't get me on it, but I think my kids would, would, would certainly take advantage of it. But it's a beautiful park, extremely uh, attractive and used. This is a view back to the Audubon Center, designed by Design Group here in Columbus. And the largest freestanding climbing wall in the Midwest. And my kid, this has become a magnet to my kids. They will get in their automobiles and they're in their 20s and they will find their way to uh, Audubon Park and climb on this wall on a Saturday afternoon. This is one of the premier birding opportunities we have in the Midwest, that lower reach of the Scioto River. So these observation uh, decks and also a uh, uh, boat launch area was put on that lower reach as well. The Scioto Mile, maybe the crescendo moment of the riverfront development, but Bicentennial Park is here, the, uh, the Civic Center Drive, Battelle Park is just off of that image, and the previously developed uh, Genoa Park. You can see this river is considerably wide. This is what it was three or four years ago. This flood wall was put in after the uh, uh, 1913 flood as a means of keeping that from happening again actually just pushed the problem a little bit further downstream, but that's a, that's a subject of a whole other presentation. This is Civic Center Drive as it existed before the renovation of, uh, Civic, of the Scioto Mile. And then this is that same view today. Four lanes of one-way traffic moving out of downtown was transformed into two lanes, <coughs> one, one way in each direction in considerable pedestrian environment. Something as simple as taking a bench and hanging it from a pergola has become an incredibly attractive feature. Views across the river are, again, magnificent. The, the money shot, as I call it. $42 million worth of redevelopment of that side of mile. Again, of considerable private investment, but uh, public investment as well, and leadership of the uh, Columbus Downtown Development Corporation. So, and Messer Construction as the uh, contractors for a, a incredibly ambitious project. Many of us have eaten at the at the milestone 229 great food stuffs can't can't ask for a more attractive place to enjoy a, uh, a, a Sunday brunch and listen to the giggling of, of children playing in the fountain. The fountain itself was recently named one of the top 15 fountains in the world, un unbeknownst to us. We get a letter through the mail that says CNN had taken a, taken a survey of world fountains and put the Columbus Bicentennial Park fountain on it. So, God bless them. 
has been a, a, a regional draw for recreation. This was meant to be an attraction to create as uh, ex-Mayor Coleman used to call it, uh, downtown is everyone's uh, front yard and neighborhood. This was meant to be a draw for downtown neighborhoods. It's a draw for regional neighborhoods. Folks are loading kids into their car and coming to uh, Bicentennial Park to play in that fountain. Again, more um, entertainment venues, movie, in the, movie on the mile in the park on summer evenings. Uh, the Columbus Arts Festival has, has returned down to downtown after a short hiatus out at CCAD's campus. There's also an engineering consideration to all of this riverfront work, the additional storage and water filtration that this river project has caused has allowed for a higher density of development in the River South District. So water that is filtered here displaces that that is not in the River South. So it's that whole public-private thing. Public investment is parlaying into good, sound private development. And then again, another shot of Bicentennial Park. The, uh, Mayor Coleman had suggested to himself and those that would pay audience and then ultimately to us, the riverfront work is great. We need more ideas. We need a plan for downtown. And I've been party to countless comprehensive plans that are a lot of words that nobody reads. So um, I'm kind of the anti-plan guy, but I'm the, I'm the pro-good idea guy. So we thought a good way of approaching this was put forth 10, 12, 15, it boiled down to 12 ideas. Great ideas and projects that are understandable, financeable, and doable, both public and private. And I, I have to go on record as saying, we coined the term drain the swamp long before the <laughs> incoming administration captured that. So I think they probably saw this presentation somewhere before. But, but, uh, but we kept hearing from everybody during this downtown strategic plan that we need to do something with the river. That's great what we've done adjacent to the river, but the river itself is pretty scruffy, and they were right. Water quality was terrible. The low head dam at Main Street was causing water to pool and turn even more brown. So our one big idea, number 12, was do something with Seidel and Tangier River, and we came up with the idea, let's get rid of the dam. There's no reason for the dam to be there any longer. It was an idea of a few generations ago to help with stormwater management. And we've got upstream flood protection in Delaware County, so we don't really need it. And if we lowered that, took that dam out, we would lower the water by six feet and open up 30 acres of real estate that heretofore was underwater. It's found ground. They're not, other than the Dutch, I don't think we're making ground anymore on this planet. So we thought we would follow that European model. So you can see the hole being punched into the low head dam. That's Miranova in the background. This is a rendering of what we had envisioned that looking like. This is just prior to the demo of the dam. This must have been after a rain event because that stage is almost covered with stormwater. And it's meant to. The 500 year flood elevation comes up almost to Washington Boulevard. So the whole riverfront is designed to go underwater from time to time. Once the plug was pulled in the bathtub, that's what the Scioto looked like uh, with the mud flats exposed. All of the river uh, channel has been engineered. Stantec Engineering had done all of that work, so there's riffles and eddies and uh, ripples that were designed into it for fish habitat and for slowing down the velocity of the river flow. And that's what it looks like after 25 acres of sod was put down. Quite a transformation. Big pool, empty bathtub, new park space. Again, the money shot shortly after opening, looking to the south. These are some of the development projects that are happened adjacent uh, with some public investment, but most, mostly private money. Downtown is a very attractive place, not just for millennials, but for, but for old guys my age who want to uh, maybe downsize and be closer to entertainment venues. Again, as I said, we've rediscovered or maybe discovered the, uh, the river. This water is crystal clear. You can stand on the Main Street Bridge and the Broad Street Bridge and look straight down and see the bottom of the river. 
We haven't been able to see the bottom of the river in, uh, uh, in 200 years. OSU rowing team, that's a pretty romantic shot. This portion of the flood wall was rebuilt, moved into the river. That's to help with uh, a, uh, attenuating some of the scour that the water would do on the bank. It would tend to wash that bank out given that oxbow. And then Main Street Bridge, again, a signature inclined arch cable stay bridge. That was DLZ Engineering in Columbus that designed that. Uh, and the Town Street Bridge beyond, the, main, uh, the Broad Street Bridge beyond that. So we've got this series of beautiful different bridges that all work together as a family. Uh, and then the riverfront connecting the whole. Currently, uh, as Many of you know the, uh, the National Veterans Memorial uh, is, is under construction. Uh, Senator John Glenn, God rest his soul, was, uh, was instrumental in uh, pushing that along with the Columbus Partnership and their efforts are, are greatly appreciated by a Columbusite like me. Uh, also this is the, uh, currently the parking lot of Veterans Memorial, 620 cars and then future private development that the City of Columbus and CDDC is underway of uh, uh, incenting as we speak. So current plans are for that 600 car garage to go underground with a ramp that leads to it and create what is yet another park that is connected to the riverfront uh, and to create a green space between the uh, Veterans Memorial and what will be some other cultural facility on what is the health department site as we commonly know it in Columbus. So now we're about to realize the original notion of COSI of having COSI sit within a park, not sit on the edge of a river but to sit within a park. So it will be surrounded by green space and it's functional green space as well. It's got, it's not just grass and trees, there are things to do within these parks. And then we all know the development activity and interest in East Franklinton. Uh, those folks, those, those neighborhoods in Franklinton and East Franklinton think of the riverfront as being their neighborhood park because it is their neighborhood park. I've got to drive to it or ride my bike to it, they can walk to it. Very, very important aspect. And that's it. That's an encapsulation of the riverfront. I'll be happy to answer any questions that any of you may have. What's next? Uh, what is next is what's currently under construction and you all have probably observed the big hole in the ground uh, of what used to be the surface lot west of COSI. Again, Columbus Downtown Development Corporation is running point on that effort. Uh, Bell Street, some of the other streets within East Franklinton on the peninsula as I call it, everything that's east of the railroad tracks. Uh, portions of those streets are being rebuilt very soon and then private development is being invited to come speak to this piece of property that is uh, west of Bell and east of the railroad tracks. So again, the city is incenting that development with new infrastructure of streets and utilities and private, uh, the private community will come in and build um, mixed use development. What moves up here? How do you see this? Well, funny you should say that. <laughs> that. That removal of the dam at Main Street affected the water level in downtown on Civic Center Drive, but as rivers slope from low end to high end, uh, therefore they run. By the time the river gets just past this site, it ceases to have an effect with the water level moving further north. But you can see how we've exposed mud flats here. Those still are within the floodway, so we can't go out there and necessarily build a building on that. But there's tremendous opportunity for other recreation things to happen right at our feet. Uh, again, you can see the, how clear some of these waters are running. Uh, and this site itself is, it also has uh, tremendous long-term possibility. This facility has been extremely successful and the views are absolutely tremendous. But this confluence site, I'm sure, will be linked as part of a larger parkway system going up both river corridors. Sir? Have you ever considered putting a canal into Franklinton and creating a river walk like San Antonio has? Have not. There used to be a canal that was 
along what is Short Street um, in the brewery district where my office is. I do know many moons ago that um, uh, Harrison Smith used to talk of a connector uh, across from Neal Avenue to the peninsula and, and then through to the brewery district, virtually where, um, uh, where Miranova is today as a connector of those. But I have not thought of that canal. I have not. Ma'am. Um, It's nothing important relative to the planning. What that was meant to inform why I stuck it on this slide, I have no idea. But it w in, in an effort to uh, help inform the city on infrastructure investment in East Franklinton, streets, the sizes of streets, the necessity for sewers, their capacity, water lines, and their capacity, we broke it down into super blocks of development. Not that any of that will happen, but it's a, it's a logic behind how we size infrastructure. This, this entire area is, is, um, is been very attractive and very active by private developers. The, the, yeah, it's, it's meant to be, the, the, the city had commissioned a master plan for the Franklinton neighborhood, East Franklinton, and in very um, general terms, they chose it to be a more of a bohemian arts district, not something to compete with the short north, which is very sophisticated from a restaurant and gallery standpoint, but a place that's more has a little bit more urban grit to it, a, a Soho or maybe what what Greenwich used to be uh, 40 years ago. It's pretty hoity toity. That's right. It's not much of a leap. And, and now that there is flood protection, because the city and the federal government had invested in flood wall, these buildings can now be insured. So people can invest in them where before they were taking a flyer. Thank you, Brian. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, and this meeting is adjourned.